Hello, Michal Hutsko here and welcome to another lecture of our REST API class. In this lecture, I'm going to show you how you can implement your own custom endpoints which are able to handle GET and POST requests. Within this tutorial, we're gonna build or implement a REST API for a school system. Within this school system, we want to keep track of uh, subjects which are being, you know, taught at this school and then records about students which are attending this school and teachers who are teaching at this school. Within this uh, lesson, I'm going to show you how we can implement an endpoint which is giving us the list of subjects inside our system. And also this endpoint or the next endpoint, second endpoint will allow us to create a new subject for our system. In this lesson, we ain't gonna use database yet. In this lesson, we're going to store everything in the temporal variable within a function implemented inside our Django REST API. So how are we going to start? There are multiple ways how people are starting or implementing these endpoints. I prefer to start every time from inside the urls.py. So right now I'm inside the school app slash urls.py as you can see at the top and I'm using the same project which I was describing in the previous lesson. So within this URL, uh, urls.py, we're going to implement or, or write or define a new path, which is going to be called subjects, subjects, subjects. So basically every time when we call a get request on a local host 8000 slash school slash subjects, we're going to get the list of subjects which are inside this system. When we call a post request on this endpoint and we provide the body, a JSON with the subject which we want to add, we're going to add a uh, this item or this subject to the list of subjects within our system. So perfect. So next thing what we need to do is implement the function inside the views the same way as we did last time. So basically we go here and we go like def list subjects function. Okay. And this function will always get the request parameter. And let me explain you how this works. Every time we do a call to an endpoint specification inside these URLs, uh, Django will receive a HTTP request. An HTTP request is uh, basically a byte stream, but Django will convert this byte stream for us into some ch something which is called a request object. It's an object of a class of a request for the Django REST or for the Django framework in this case. Now, uh, here we define on to which function this object is going to be sent as a parameter. And in the views, the function is being defined. So here in this request parameter, that's the reason why we will get the request object, which we can then manipulate later. So here we need to specify the function as a second parameter to this path uh, function. So it's uh, like uh, views, yeah, it's views dot, uh, and uh, the name was like list subjects, right? And it's always a good convention to create a name for this, like a list uh, subjects. Perfect, without the underscore in this case. Perfect, so, so what we want to do, so as I said, there will be two scenarios. One will be the get uh, method and the other one will be the post method. So let's start simple. So if request, and this request, because it's an object, it has multiple parameters on the internet in the documentation, you can find these parameters, for example, method and the body. I will show you through the other lessons, but for now, the important one is a method. This this uh, uh, method parameter will hold the method name. And as I said, this function should be variable. It should, it should be able to operate on get method and also on the post method. So first use case is if this is equal to get. So basically if inside this method is a get string, right? So in this case, what we really want to do is we want to return a list of subjects which are inside our system. For the sake of simplicity, I will create here a list of subjects. And we're going to put here uh, dicts, dictionaries, so name, it will be like a maths, and the other one will be name, name, and uh, it will be like a yeah, PE, okay? So what we want to do, we want to return this. Okay, so first thing which may be coming to your mind or came into your mind is like, okay, I'm going to return subject, but this is not true. As I said, the HTTP protocol is expecting some data types. And one return value for functions which are defining the views for the HTTP protocol is the HTML. But in this uh, course, we are talking about the REST APIs. And the common data type for REST APIs is, as I mentioned, a JSON. So what we want to do is uh, we want to return here a JSON. And here, Django has a special thing which is called a JSON response class. Now, why cannot we just return the lists with, the, with these dictionaries? 
they look like JSON, right? It's like JSON, Michael. Why not? So the problem is the Python list and dictionaries are not JSONs, right? So JSON is a different data type, let's say. And Python itself doesn't have a JSON data type. For this reason, you need to have a constructor which is creating a JSON for you, and basically JSON response is this constructor. So what you then need to specify here as a first parameter is a is an object which should be converted to JSON. And because this is a list of basically dictionaries, it's not the dictionary itself, what we need to do here is to specify a save parameter and set it to false or, or true, I guess, yeah, I, sorry, I, I think it's, it's true, I set this to true. Sorry, it should be false, my bad. No. Okay, and also good practice is put here a status, uh, yeah, and uh, status code for this case, it will be just 200 because it's a get request, perfect. Every time when we call a method, get method for the endpoint which we specified here, we will get a list of subjects. So let's check this. If I go to the local host 8000 in the Google Chrome, you will see that I have here an endpoint uh, which is called a school. It's like this path, like I go to school. Don't forget the backslash at the end. And when you call this endpoint, you will see that there are another two specified within this school, which is one is the hello world from the last lecture, and the other one is subject. So if I go for subjects and I press enter, I get a list of subjects, as you can see here. Fine. So let's do the same thing from inside the postman, because I was talking a lot about the postman, but I never used it before. So in the postman here, I created a collection with uh, requests which I want to call. The first request which I want to show you is this, I will, I will don't save these changes and I will close this one, is a get subjects. So let's start one by one. How you create this collection? You click on new, you click on the collection, I showed it last time. And then inside the collection you can create the HTTP request. So when you create the HTTP request, here you can specify the name, as I said, it's called the get subjects in this case. Here you specify the URL, in this case it's HTTP, don't forget the HTTP part here. Basically you can copy the URL from inside here. If you go to your Chrome and press Ctrl C and then go here and press Ctrl V, you will get the same uh, result, right? So here you can see you don't need anything else. From the drop down, you select the get, you specify the URL and you send it and you will see that our server will return in this case, a list of JSON. Perfect. So this is our get endpoint, a get request. But what if we want to create also a post request? As you can see, I have here a post uh, request specified. So what is the difference between the post and get? Get is just for getting some data from, from the endpoint, basically, and post is for sending some data, which should be inserted into something. In this case, into the list of subjects, we want to, uh, we want to insert a new subject specified in the body of a post request. So how do you specify the body? Very simple. First, you need to create the request, so new HTTP request. You specify a correct name or, or some, some very describing name. In this case, I'm using post subjects. Most of the time, I'm specifying the names for, for these uh, requests inside the postman based on the method and the endpoint which I'm calling. So it's easy for me to navigate inside here. It's quite common when you are working for some company and you're creating some big project that you have here like hundreds of... Uh, of uh, endpoint calls, uh, requests, which you want to test during your development time. So sometimes it's handy to use appropriate naming convention. So that this is my naming convention. So and where do you specify the body? If you, if you open the request for the first time, you see you are in this params section. But what you need to do, you need to go to the body section. And you, here you can specify the body of the request which you want to send. It's important that you, spe that you select the raw option here and you select a JSON here from the dropdown. In this case, you are going to send a JSON to endpoint. Because right now we specify only the get request. When I send the post request here, I will get 403 forbidden, okay? That's for multiple reasons, but one of the reasons is like, I didn't specify a method post here in the definition. So I will do it right now. So a request, a method, and the name of the method will be post. And in case of a post, let's first look how we can query or get the body of the request. Because I'm getting the request object here, the request object has the body param. So what I can do is here I can print the, well, I can assign it first to a variable. This is a good practice. So subject, I, I will call it subject draw, sub, or, or, or let's call it just subject, subject equals to request dot body. And when I look inside the body, let's print the subject body. Right, and also what I want to show you is just print the type type of, of the subject. One important part or thing here is also this forbidden message. 
The forbidden message we are getting because one of the security options which is turned on by default for the Django applications. This security option is or problem is called CS, CSRF mechanism. Please go to the Google and, and read something about it. Uh, by default, it's turned on and it's very handy in production uh, systems. But because we are developing right now, uh, we are unable to call the endpoints from a local host. I don't want to go into these details too much, but basically, if you want to develop with local host with the Django, it's quite handy to turn this off for your development environment. And how you can do it? Well, you need to import a decorator. Uh, Python has a thing which is called decorator. If you don't know decorators, are just adding some functionality on top of the functions which they are decorating. Please go to the internet and, and Google something about it. But if you want to disable the CSRF, all right, CSRF, yeah, uh, security feature, you need to import this decorator. It's inside the Django of use, and then decorator, and then CSRF, and import CSRF exempt. Now, then what you need to do, you need to decorate the function which you want to, you know, turn off the CSRF functionality. And here then, uh, this needs to be double equals, right? And here now, when, when we go and we, we send the request to this endpoint now, I hope it will work. So I would like to insert the physics if I send this. Uh, first of all, it's ne it needs to reload the server, so it's taking a little bit time, so please wait until the server will be reloaded. You can even shut this down by Control c and then turn it back on, just to be sure, so I, I, can, I can even do it. So I press Control c and then I put the arrow up, Python manage Python server again, just to be sure that the effect is, has taken place. Sometimes it's just taking time. Yep, and when I go here and I send physics, you will see that First of all, internal server error because I'm not returning anything. But if I go to, to, the, to the logs, you will see that the, the message or the, the value, so this is the first print of the subject, is very strange. It's encapsulated in this B and single quotes. So this, what you see, is a binary stream coming from the HTTP protocol. So why am this showing to you? It's important to take in mind or keep in mind that basically HTTP is nothing else, just a protocol built on top of the wires connecting to computers, right? So, and through these wires, the electrical current is coming. The one and zeros, ones and zeros, ones and zeros, and that's the byte stream which the Python is receiving. So if you don't convert this byte stream to some meaningful data type, Python is not able to work with this, right? And basically you cannot just add this byte stream, or you can, but it will make no sense to, to the subjects list or later to the database. So what is important or to keep in mind is that you always need to transform the byte stream into the desired data type which you are expecting. So how are you gonna do it? So we will create a subject, uh, I can, anyway, let's call it data variable. And here we want to convert this byte stream in the subject uh, variable into some meaningful, let's say, dictionary. And we're gonna do it with the uh, use of JSON library. And this JSON library, it has a function which is called load stream. And it takes the stream, in this case the byte stream, and it converts it into the dictionary. So if I send here the subject and let's print the result back here, if I instead of subject, I will put here subject data and I press save and I send the request again. Yeah, don't mind this error for now. And I go here into, into the output of the server you will see the first output is the same, but the second output, this looks more familiar. This looks like a dictionary, like a JSON. And that's exactly what we wanted to convert or get from the post request. And now what we can do, we can just very simply add this subject data into the subjects here, right? So, and then we can use the post uh, method to add new data into our, you know, database later. So how are we gonna do it? Subjects append is the function and we just send here subject data. Now, the important part of the question is what should be returned after we call the endpoint uh, successfully? In, uh, in this case, it's quite a good practice that you are returning the object which you are adding to the, to the list, right? Because in general, this can be not just about subjects, it can be about teachers, students later, right? So it's a good practice that at the post request or at the post endpoint or the endpoint where you are calling the post, you are then returning the object which you created. So how are we gonna do it? Very simple, by JSON response, right? 
and I return the subject data. In this case, the save false parameter don't need to be here because this is a dictionary and that can be just returned by, by this function. So if I press save and, and, I, and I run this endpoint again, you will see that it returned the physics, right? And if I go back to the get, and I get the subjects, in this case, instead of two, there is the third one, which I just added, okay? Just to show you it's working, if I send the physics again, and I go back to subjects, and I query this again, there are two of them. Now, keep in mind the flow of this design, right, is that we are storing the subjects inside the memory, inside the RAM memory, and they are only presented if the server is running. If you shut the server down and turn it back on, again, the subject will be just two of them. So the data is not persisting somewhere on the disk, on the storage. So in order to overcome this problem, you need to connect, for example, a database to this REST API. And that's something what we will do in the future videos. So the key takeaway from this lecture is HTTP protocol is sending byte streams from the client to the server. And Python itself is just some handy tool which is helping us to organize the data, for example, to storing the data. In order to work with the byte currents or byte streams, you need to convert them in some meaningful data types using some libraries. So in this video, I showed you how you can do these endpoints on your own. Uh, later, when we're going to talk about the Django REST framework, the framework allows you or provides you some tools which are doing these things behind the scenes, all the black magic, right? So you don't need to worry about that. Those are very handy tools, but it's important that you understand the, the mechanism behind the scenes, and that's why I'm showing you all this basic stuff. I hope you are enjoying this course. Thank you very much for watching. I hope I will see you in the next one.